Okay, and we're back to do another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on Flash and how to edit audio in Flash. Now I have a, I do have an audio editing program, but I find for just minor editing you can really do quite a bit right in Flash. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. I'm using CS3, but it, I have a screenshot of CS4. It's a little different, but I'm going to show it to you. But this is, once you get into the audio editing mode, it's pretty much the same on 3, 4, or 5. So you can watch this if you're on any version. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some audio. So I've already recorded my audio, and I have it over here in my library. I've got a folder called Audio. And this is Z Audio. By the way, this is for my Alphabet Adventure series. This is uh, the last one in the series. So when this is done, I'm going to also be showing how to draw and do other things in Flash. But when this is done, you can actually view the finished product. It'll be on my children's channel, and I'm going to have a link to to the uh, playlist when we're done. Okay, so what I've done over here, I've got my these are my uh, layers, and of course you've got this is to make a new layer. It says Insert Layer. I've already done that. I've already named it Audio. So this is where I want to put my audio. Now, unlike on other programs where you drag it right onto the timeline, that does not, I mean, right onto this uh, layer thing, it does not work in Flash. So that's the first little trick. So I'm going to go ahead, though, and I'm going to highlight my keyframe. We know what keyframes are. I'm going to come over to my folder, and I'm going to grab my Z audio, and I'm just going to drag it on stage. Bing. Okay, so there it is. Um, of course, it doesn't do anything on stage because it doesn't contain an image. It's, you don't see it anywhere. But here's where you do see it. You see it on your layers. And this is your typical audio file, and it's got bumps, and this is where the noise is, and this is your audio file. I happen to know on this one what I have to do is the point I have to do is it doesn't fade out. This action, this is a stop action. I'm going to look down here. I've, I've, how I can check that, this is an action. I can check this keyframe, select the keyframe, come down here to actions, and you can see it tells me. It is a stop action. So I have a stop action there because I want the video to be done at that point. So I need this audio to fade out. As you can see, there's still a line going of audio. I mean, it'll stop, it'll stop dead when that stop action comes in, or if there's no more frames. If it runs out of room, then it's also going to stop dead. So what I need to do is I need to go in and edit this audio and I want to make this audio fade out so that it's all, by the time we get to the stop action it's already faded out and there's not going to be an abrupt ending. I'm going to play it for you right now um, how it sounds right now. It's really abrupt. Listen. It just cuts right off. I'm going to turn that up and try again make sure that you can hear it. Okay, let's take it from back here, and it just play. And bang, it's gone. I don't like that. I don't like bang, it's gone. I want it to have a nice, smooth transition, and I'm going to go in. So how do I go in and edit my audio? Okay, that's what. We're, this is where we're at. I need my little thing down here again. And I'm going to go into Properties. Now, I always keep my Properties panel open uh, when I'm working. I'm going to select my, this is in CS3, so if you're in CS3 you select your audio and see so you come down here and all these options come up for audio. Uh, the sound name, it says sound, Z audio, effect, none. If I go into the effect, uh, they all have the same thing in the effect too. So left channel would mean it's going to only go to the left channel, right channel would be it's only going to go to the right channel, fade left to right, you know, that's it's all pretty uh, self-explanatory, fade in, fade out, custom. I'm going to say custom. And then it pops up. I'm going to cancel this for a minute. But another way, you don't have to go into that menu at all. You can just say edit, and it pops up. Now, in all three, four, and five, this edit window looks the same. I'm just going to say okay. I did uh, go ahead and grab some images. Um, this is a CS4 screenshot. And in CS4, it's just over here. It's, but it's the same thing. It's here, effect, custom. And, in, and the same thing, if you don't want to uh, pull, use those pull-down menus, you can just do this little pencil thing over here. And that, I'm going to go to the next frame. And uh, here's the same, see these menu items are the same thing. But you can just select this little pencil thing and be directly in edit mode in CS4. And I think CS5 as well. I haven't seen CS5 too, too much of it yet. Okay. So here I want to do this. Oh, I'm going to select my sound again. And the other thing is there's stream and sync. Or, yeah, stream and, okay, start, stop, event, 
stream. St event, I don't, I don't use any of those sound. I always go with stream because stream is going to keep it synced. It's going to, when you're doing animation and you want your audio synced up with what's happening visually on the screen here, on the stage, I call this the stage area, by the way, on the stage area, then you want streaming because that way things are going to be in sync. If you don't, if you use some of these other ones, then you're going to have things happening. It's not going to run smoothly. This keeps it locked together, locked in place. It's almost like lock, you know, one of those lock things. Okay, so stream, it's usually on stream by default, I think, but if it is on something else, you want to tr probably change it to stream. And then a repeat, too. This would be the number of times you wanted to repeat if you wanted to do that, or uh, on a loop. Okay, I'm not going to do any of that. What we're talking about today is just going in and editing the audio. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to come down here and say edit. If you're in CS4 or CS5, you just cl click on that little pencil, and boom, this new window pops up. So this is your edit envelope or edit um, thing. And you can just do a fade in or fade out, but I don't really want to do that. Um, also, I wanted to note what frame this was at because this is about where I want my fade in to come at. And I'm going to look up here, and the, the frames are all numbered. So I actually wanted to start fading out around here. Around Let's try it at 1,000 and see how, see how it looks there. Oops, it's not going to let me do that. But I'm going to go to one uh, frame 1,000, and that's where I want my fade out to begin. So let me... Move up here. See, these are also numbered. There's 410, 420, 430, so I've got a little ways to go. Keep scrolling. Ah, I passed it. Back up a tinch. 970. Let's, 9, oh, this is a, my last, this is something I'm saying loud. So that's my last word, probably. Anytime, that's a great way to find your way around. You have, Take a look at these audio files, because there's clues here. Look at it. You can see this is something being said here. So that that's probably the last time I say Z. So then I'm going to go a little bit after that, and see, a 1,000 was just about right. This is where I'm going to start my fade out. Not necessarily where it's going to, uh, it's not going to end here. If you look in here, there's lines, and this is a common theme in a lot of uh, audio editing for, uh, programs, or uh, multimedia programs with audio. There's these lines. See, like I can grab the whole line and turn it all down. And that will just bring, this is bringing volume down is what it's doing. So I can do that just to bring the whole volume down if it's, if it's too loud in the mix. Um, and this, is, of course, is a stereo uh, file. That's why I have two here. One is left and one is right, um, right channel. So these, they're pretty, pretty much identical in this case. I didn't do any crazy uh, recording technique. I just put it out as a stereo because it gives a nicer, you know, fuller sound. So... I don't want to bring the volume of everything down, but what I do want to do, I put when you click on this line, as you noted, these little square things come up, and that means that uh, there's some kind of an edit going on. So that's where I want the fade out to start, and I'm going to scroll down, and where does it? It goes to like one one oh seven five. So I'm going to go down. Actually, down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and make it smaller because it's kind of too big to fit in the whole uh, frame here. So I'm going to shrink down with my... This is, you know, standard computer zoom in, zoom out and because um, I want to shrink it down around 175, 1075. I went a little too low, so I'm going to come back up. There we go. This is about the level I want to look at. Okay, so here's my first square. I have one on both parts, actually. And then here's my second one. I want it to fade out before one, around 107.5. So there's my marker for 107.5. So I come up here to touch that line again, and the little things pop out. And then I'm going to take that and pull it down. And you see how this made a uh, a line like uh, going in a crossway. This is the volume, so that was it's going to start there, and then it's going to gradually fade out here. And I'm going to do the same thing on both channels. So my left and right channel are both fading out. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say OK, and then we're going to listen to it and see if we like it. We can still come back and make what I want. I would do want to show you. If it's too long, you can shorten it by just grabbing this here, and so on. You can grab and move these things around if you don't like it. But let's try. Let's give this a try. So I put the. Uh, Marker the fade out in right around here at 1,000, and it should fade out completely before I reach the stop action. That's what I'm after. So here I got my uh, my fade out, my first attempt at the fade out. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to back this timeline up before 1,000. That's the place where we're going to start the fade out. I'm going to see. This looks like again. You can see that's my last 
let's back it up even before that. I think that's where I say the letter Z, and then it's, the music would fade out after that. So I've got my controls up here. There's other ways to do it, too. I like them hooked in there. Um, I'm going to take a quick peek at this other... Uh, so I think I was having a problem. Yeah, I couldn't get the controller to go in there, but I like it's the controller. This is what this is. Uh, I've got it hooked, you know, kind of hooked in there, right into my uh, taskbar, I guess. I don't know. Oh, but look, go ahead. Here it is. We're gonna put it at nine, uh, nine hundred something. A little before this last thing here, and we're gonna go ahead and press play and listen and see if we like it. So let's press play. Z. I think that was a little bit too fast, actually. I didn't like that fade out, but I don't think it's the fade out. I think it's this, there's not enough running room here. So what I want to do, how you can get around that, you can extend this out. I mean, you could add frames on the other side too. Uh, by how, let's do that way. Let's try that way. I'm going to pull this out so we can really see. Okay, that's it, it, all the frames are up there. How you do that is you would just like, say I want to extend it out to here. I would go hit, select a frame, hold down my shift key, select another frame, and then I'm going to hit F5. F5 is going to give you regular frames, not keyframes. And then it would extend the whole thing out like that. That's probably not the way I would do it. I'm going to go Control Z and undo that. Because that's not the way I would do it. Then I'm going to have to move this action around and everything. I don't want to do that. You can also do it on the other side of, of the... Uh, if it's not going to mess anything up, which in this case it's not, because it's past the last keyframe. We don't want it on this side of the keyframe because that's going to change everything. That'll move this keyframe around. But if I, I can go on this side of... Uh, between this keyframe and this keyframe, and I'm, you can even, like, I could, okay, I'm going to go press Shift, and I'm going to select all those frames, but you can even go a little more. You can even go a little group like that. Bam. And then I'm just going to hit F5, boom, and it's going to move it that, that amount of space. And that might even just be enough space. So let me just, let's go back to here. I'm going to go to frame 940 before my last, um, uh, the last talking part here. And I'm going to go ahead, let's hear, listen to it again. Let's press, press play. Z. Okay, the ending, I still think I want a couple more frames. I think it ends too fast, so I'm going to do that again like this. I'm going to go that much, and I'm going to hit F5, and that's going to boost it right out again, another, another frames. Let me listen to it again, but I think I do want to adjust the fade up. So I'm going to see, see if I like that as far as the length. Let's do it again. Z. Okay, I definitely think that's much better length. Um, I want my fade out to be even a little longer. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back into editing mode of audio. I'm going to select my, anywhere on this audio, anywhere, it doesn't matter where. just has to be selected and then it'll light up over here in the thing and come down and say edit. And I'm going to go all the way to the end again, down, all the way down here. Oops, overshot it a little bit. Let's see. I want to find that fade out. See, here it is. And I'm going to take this little knob, my little square thing, and I'm going to drag it out a little more because I think it faded out a little too fast. So I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to come back up here, and again, I'm just going to listen to the end. We don't have to listen to the whole thing. Unfortunately, you can't listen to that in the editing mode. You can listen to it in editing mode, but it makes you play the whole thing. So you've got to come back out to your timeline uh, to listen. So let's go ahead. Z. Still a little fast for my taste. I think it needs a little more room. So I'm going to do another chunk like this, select some frames, hit F5, and I'm going to show you up here, I think, uh, time insert timeline, C frame, F5. But I skipped that. And then also, if you want keyframe, that's F6. If you want blank keyframe, that's F7. So if you want to save time, start learning some of these shortcuts. You know, F5 for frame, F6 for keyframe, F7 for uh, blank keyframe. So, and it, you, like I just showed, you can do it over multiple frames. Okay, so I, I think we add a little more. Select the audio again. Hit edit again, 
and I'm going to drag that. It seems just to, to drop off too much. I don't want it to drop off. I want a nice gradual fade out. That's what I'm after. I don't want it to drop off too drastically. I think it's still just dropping off a little drastically. So go ahead and change it some more. There's no, you know, you don't have to, there's no reason that you have to, uh, you just keep playing with it until you're happy. You know, and you may have to, you know, tweak it several times. So let's hear this one more time. Z. Again, I just feel like it's too, uh, too drastic. I, I want it, I want it to drag out a little more. So, um. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go that many more frames. Hit F5, insert frames, select the select the audio track, come down to edit, go to that spot, go to that spot where we're fading out, which we know is around the 1100 or so spot. Okay? And I'm going to drag out that uh, that fade out even more. And these fall in sync when you move them like that. I like that. But I think if you move them up and down, they don't. Yeah. If you move, so if you move them left or right, they do keep in sync with each other, the left and right channels. But if you go up and down like this, they don't. So you have to move each one up and down uh, alone, on your own. Okay, and I'm going to hit that again and say, okay, let's give this one more try. I think we're getting really closer to how I'm going to like it, how I want it to be. Z. Okay, little one more tweak, just one more tweak. It kind of dropped to silence too fast. Maybe I'm going to. Uh... So I think what it is is that it's dropping to silence too fast. That's what I don't like. So how I'm going to alter that is I'm going to drag it out a little more, but I'm also going to not quite be down to zero on the, at the end. I'm going to see if I like that better. Maybe just leave a little tiny bit of volume and see if that works out better. Okay, so I'm going to back it up one more time and try again. Z. I like that. I think we finally hit on the perfect one, or perfect as it's going to get. So I'm going to say save on that. And um, there's going to be a series of uh, videos on this. I'm going to show how to draw in Flash, and I'm going to show how to do some basic animation in Flash. This is probably for more of the beginner. But maybe even uh, some advanced students could learn a thing or two. Okay, so this is it for the audio portion. And once it's published, we will have a link to the final product on my other channel. So you can see the final product and that this is an actual uh, video that's going to go on YouTube. Okay, until next time.